Welcome back, everyone, for some more Vampire Boyfriends. Now, some people didn't want the constant music playing. I think that it is a, a big part of the Vampire Boyfriends experience. Um, however, I can see how it can get repetitive. So, I think that on this run, since we already did one run with the music, we'll do a run with uh, some different music. And the soundtrack that I've chosen was the... Um, well, everyone... Everyone knows this famous album put out in the mid-90s by Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart, uh, Hulk Rules, a collection of songs performed by Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart. So that's what we'll be playing while playing, uh, listening to while playing Strange Love's Vampire Boyfriend. So we'll start that. Yep, that's going. And we'll continue on with the story. All right. Well, we want to choose a name. We chose June last time, and we know... We now know what happened to June when she went to college. That uh, she became a crazy cat lady, apparently. Um, and it looks like some of you are saying Mary Sue. Some of you are saying Erico. Ah, okay, let's go with Erico. Um, her last name was Christy. So let's go with that. Oh, yeah. The sweet sounds of Jimmy Hart's voice. Let's get started. Okay, we already know this part. Okay, we have to choose, once again, the major. Do we go with number one, theater, number two, mixed martial arts, or number three, drop out of college and write a book? To the bone. Um, hmm. Looks like most of you are saying we need to drop out of college and move to Chicago and start writing our book. All right, let's go with that. Chicago's famous for being cold, so you thought it would be a great place to write because you'd be forced to be inside all the time. Turns out, there are so many cool things to do and so many cool people to do them with that it's been very tough to stay focused on the book. One afternoon, you're on the L on your way to meet up with some friends to take in an avant-garde performance art piece. You're completely engrossed in your knitting, and at, you're at the very end of binding off a scarf. You've been tinkering with designing patterns, and this one is your finest creation. It is by far the coolest scarf you've made yet. As you bind off the last stitch, a tall man with salt and pepper hair and thick black glasses sitting near you stands up and starts frantically looking around. His movements catch your attention, and you watch him for a moment as he methodically searches the seats. He looks familiar, but you can't place him. Can I help you? You ask. He looks up at you, surprised that someone spoke to him. I lost my scarf, he says in a pitiful voice. That voice? You know that voice? And you cannot believe your luck. You're talking to a modern American storytelling pioneer and indie hipster idol, host of This Americano Life, Ira Blass. Amer Americano Life? You hold up the scarf as you've just finished. You can have this one if you want. His eyes widen. Really? Are you sure? He inspects it. This is wonderful work. Thanks, you say, blushing. I designed it. You hand it to him and he takes it. Hold on. Hulk's rapping. Okay, I just needed to stop for that for a second. He wraps the scarf around his neck. Thank you, he says genuinely. He gives you a clear-eyed stare. So, what's your story? You tell him about how you just moved to Chicago from Lily Valley, and that you're actually working on a book about what a strange place it is, and the people who live there. Their personal stories are so interesting and have such unexpected twists. Ira is enthralled with your story, which is especially amazing because he's pretty much the king of storytelling. I absolutely cannot wait to read it. I absolutely cannot wait to read it, he thinks for a moment and then says, I think I'd like to publish this. Joy wells in your chest. You didn't know he published books, but no way are you questioning Ira Blass. You resolve to turn around and go straight home to finish writing your book. Turn to 326. 
A year later, your book, Peaks and Valleys in Lily Valley, has been on the New York Times bestseller list for six weeks in a row. You're having celebratory drinks with Ira Blass and your new friends, gritty author Chucky Palahniuk, screenwriter-director Jennifer Eastfelt, comedian-writer Kristen Wagg, and writer-producer sci-fi goddess Jane Espison to talk about how to handle the film rights to your story. Sorry, I'm very distracted by, by Hulk right now. As well as the option for a sequel. They all keep telling you how fabulous you are and that you are the new voice for a newer generation. And really... Who are you to argue? The end. Chat, I still did not see any vampire boyfriends. You can tell by this music that Hulk's rather upset as well. He's rather angry about the lack of a vampire boyfriend. We're going to do this again. Until we get a vampire boyfriend, I'm telling you. 24-inch pythons want that vampire boyfriend. So we're going to start this again. I don't know how many times we're going to have to do this before we find a vampire boyfriend, but we're going to do it. Okay. The Hulkster rules. Yes, that's correct. We need to choose a name. We know what happens to Eriko. She writes a best-selling book in Chicago. Let's see. Mary Sue Zerp, Hulksterella, the fabulous moolah. That's not bad. Funyarinpa? Um, Funyarinpa is mysterious. No one really knows how it works, though. Laura? I mean, that would be another one. It looks like a lot of people are saying Mary Sue. So, Hoku-chan, there you go. I like how you think. Hoku-chan, there we go. Alright, so let's continue on. Hulkster rules... We need another vote. Okay, number one for theater. Number two for mixed martial arts. Number three. Okay, we're not even doing number three. We know where that goes. There are no choices after going to Chicago. So no number three. Either number one, theater. Number two, MMA. Most of you are saying theater. While this sax solo goes on. It really sets the mood. All right, I think we're going to end the vote there. It looks like most of you are saying number one, so let's go with theater. Let's see what happens now to Hulku Chan in her quest to become Starlet. As a senior theater major, naturally, you're going to audition for the fall play. This year, it's a good one. Dawn Breaks is a stage adaptation of the wildly pa- popular vampire novel Dawn Breaks and Loose to Tell the Tale. You have your eye on the lead role of Ella Dawn, the engine turned deadly vampiress. You love to play the sweet young thing, but even better, you love dark, crazy, sexy vampire stories. You can't wait to sink your teeth into a few blood sucking scenes with one of the hot guys of the theater department. Yep. Yeah. Just, um. Uh, just as some backstory, the song you're hearing right now, Hulkster in Heaven, is a ballad. Hulk Hogan was singing, dedicated to one of his fans who died, just so you know that. You're lying on your bed, practicing your monologue, when you're interrupted by a knock at your apartment door. You jump up and peer through the peephole to see your friends, Cindy and Alyssa, decked out in cute clothes and heel. Wait, we already read this, actually. All right, a bottle of wine. Okay, so we... We, uh... (laughs) I'll see you again. Hulkster comes to heaven. When the Hulkster comes to heaven. Okay, so here are our choices. Do we go out? Blow off preparing for the monologue? Do we do we stay in? Lost another Hulkamaniac. So we're going with number one. We're going out to have a good time with our friends. Turn to three! You follow Alyssa into your bedroom and she holds up a fantastic mini dress you forgot you even had. This still has the tags on it! If that's not a crime, I don't know what is, Alyssa says, shaking her head. You're right! Give me ten minutes and I'll be ready to go. You respond, smiling. Cindy claps her hands and jumps up and down. Fabulous! Can we open that wine? You yell, of course, over your shoulder as you head off to the bathroom to pretty up. 
Your friends are tipsy by the time the three of you walk out the door. You can't help but laugh along with their giggles as you walk the three blocks to Drink Me, the hottest bar in town. The place used to be a karaoke bar and a towny joint you wouldn't be caught dead in. You've only been there once before in its previous incarnation, and found it kind of grimy and way too brightly lit. It was definitely not well suited for a classy girl's night out. Word is, the new owners completely redid the place, and it has now a slick New York vibe going on. You can't wait to check it out! With a big, dark wooden door and no sign, you're almost on top of it before you realize you've arrived. A be- The Hulkamaniac. A beefy, grim-looking bouncer checks your IDs and waves the three of you in. The place is packed, but in the dim light, you can see three seats at the bar standing open as they were held for you and your girls. Cindy grabs you and Alyssa by the hands and pulls you towards the stools, making you sit in the middle. She starts waving obnoxiously at the bartender. Excuse me, she yells over the noise. <sighs> Royce! The tall, muscular man turns to face the three of you, and your heart stops beating. He is absolutely gorgeous, with dark hair, warm chocolate brown eyes, and perfect skin. Built like a quarterback and dressed like a jeans model, this guy is pretty much your dream guy. Your eyes lock as he walks over. Can I help you? He asks Cindy his eyes not moving from yours. Yes, can we get three vodka martinis, please? Up and extra dirty, Alyssa pipes up, smiling seductively at him. He nods once, and as he turns, you begin to breathe again. You hadn't even realized you were holding your breath. I heard he was hot, but holy cow! Break me off a piece of that and swirl it in butter? Cindy is always coming up with the weirdest phrases. You're unable to speak, so you just smile weakly in her general direction. The bartender brings back the drinks and sets them on napkins in front of the three of you. And I didn't realize this song was so long. <laughs> she just keeps going on. He gives you a small, sexy smile as he turns away. You pick up your glass and realize that there's writing on your napkin. It has a name, Royce, and a telephone number on it. Your heart starts beating again, and your pulse races. The bartender's head snaps up like he smells something delicious, and looks down at you again. Thank God you're sitting down, because you're weak in the knees. Alyssa gasps loudly, snatching the napkin. Is that his number? You nod, down your drink, and tuck the napkin in your bag. Cindy giggles and downs her own drink. That's right, girl. Let's party like a pack of wild dogs. Then she gets up on her knees on her bar stool and yells, Woo! Next drink is on me in honor of my new tattoo. She proudly points to the start tattoo on her wrist. Oh my the god! Check out the pump, brother! Wanna not? What's up, dude? I was born, I was bred, I was southern fed. Got a crazy idea running through my, my head. head. California is a place that I had to be. The man sitting next to Cindy looks up at her, tilting her head. Oh, the pythons, baby. Well, hello there, he purrs. I'm Benjamin. Would you look at that? You notice that none of you had noticed him until this moment. Check out the pythons, baby. He rivals Royce in looks department. The Hulkster's back, but he's much older and sexy in a Harrison Ford without an earring kind of way. Alyssa motions to the bartender. Another round... Cindy sloppily turns towards him, almost falling off her school. Oh, the pythons, baby. Hi, she slurs to her new neighbor. Would you look at that? I'm Cindy. Liquor always hits her hard. Hey, check out the pythons, baby. He takes her hand and helps her down. The hoaxer's back. At the same time, inspecting her arm. That is a very alluring tattoo. Where did you get your work done? And now, you've lost Cindy to a very deep conversation with the smoking stranger. Thankfully, you're... By the way, this was an album that was... Actually had a retail release. You know, this was sold in stores and promoted on WCW TV. So I just want you to know this was not meant to be a joke. This is supposed to be a real album. Thankfully, your friends are hot enough to get away with being as obnoxious as they are. At least they're never boring. With the next round, Royce brings four shots. Ladies, would you do like to do a shot with me? Every time you do shots, things get wild. One shot is usually fine, but the second, third, fourth, and fifth are often too quick to follow. And you've been known to wake up in Mexico? Okay, that only happened one time, and it's a great story. 
But seriously, even waking up in Mexico once is enough. Do you throw caution to the wind and take a shot? You only live once, right? Or do you do, do you do the responsible thing and go home? You can always call the heart bartender later, and you can be so charming when sober. You know, even though I was reading that, I couldn't concentrate on anything that happened because of the dulcet tones of Hulk Hogan. So number one is taking a shot because you only live once. Number two is doing the responsible thing and just going home. The Hulkster's in the house. Check him out, check him out. Looks like number one's winning, so we'll go with that. On your feet. Off your seat, that's right. Got a brand new beat. When the going gets tough, the tough get rough. Yeah. Okay, what the hell, you say? As you throw your hair back and pick up the small glass. Exactly, Roy says, grinning at you. You toss back the brown liquid in one swallow, and the four of you slam the glasses on the bar at the same time. Royce picks up the bottle and pours another round. Well, why not? After the second round, the bartender leans against the bar. We haven't been properly introduced. I'm Royce, and I see you've met your, my friend, Benjamin. He's a very important television producer. The hunky guy who's been talking to Cindy looks up and smiles at you and Alyssa. He exchanges a meaningful glance with Royce, and what looks like a nod. This is Cindy and Alyssa. You nod to your right, then your left. Royce reaches for your hand, and you feel an electric current before he even touches you. And you are... Hoku-chan, you whisper. That's beautiful, he murmurs. You're beautiful. You mentally smack yourself. Damn shots. Royce just smiles again and pours another round. Before you know it, the bar is empty and the waitstaff is putting chairs on top of tables. Alyssa's nearly asleep with her head on the bar and Cindy's slow dancing with Benjamin in front of the jukebox. You giggle at your friends as Royce lifts the tender your hand off the bar, softly kissing the tips of your fingers. So, I'm off work in about ten minutes. Do you want to come over and hang out for a while? You don't normally go home with strangers, but this man is gorgeous. His touch is electric. You hazily remember talking him to him enough to think you have a lot in common. And you're drunk. Do you decide you can't resist and agree to go home with Royce? Turn to Eleven. Or do you want to go home with your friends? You can take your time getting to know Royce. Turn to Twelve. Okay, number one, go with Royce. Number two, go with your friends. Looks like the chat has been smitten with Royce. Just as Hoku-chan has. I wanna be a Hulkamaniac Have fun with my family and friends I wanna be a Hulkamaniac Have fun with my family and friends Okay, number one's winning. Royce locks the front door to the bar behind you. It's still very dark outside, and you're still a bit unsteady, so you're relieved when he takes your hand. I'm just a short walk this way, you leaning close to him. He inhales short, sharply, puts his arm around you and murmurs, Hoku-chan, you smell amazing. You turn toward him, burying your face in his neck, mumbling, Woo cool. Royce lifts your chin to face him, and as you stare up into his eyes, you go weak in the knees. He holds you to him and leans closer into that magical, electric, somewhat hazy moment, kissing you with a soft insistence. Before you know it, you're in the alleyway, leaning up against the wall, making out. You've never been kissed with such ferocity before, and it's thrilling and scary at the same time. You think to yourself that you really hit the jackpot with this guy. You feel a pain just below your jaw as you realize that he's bitten you sharply. You jump back, holding your neck, your hand instantly covered in something warm and sticky. Angrily, you snap, what did you just? But stop short when you see his face full of evil lust and fangs. He lunges back at you, sucking at the wound he made in your neck. As the world fades to black, you weakly muse to yourself, well, I certainly didn't see this coming. So things ended badly for Hoku-chan. She did not get a vampire boyfriend, but rather just uh, killed by a vampire. I mean, Royce turned out to be no boyfriend at all. 
just a murderous vampire. And that's a problem, because the entire reason we were playing this was because we wanted to get a vampire boyfriend. And we didn't get it. Hmm. This really doesn't count as a vampire boyfriend, I have to say. Hmm. But, I mean, he's, he's right there on the title screen, vampire boyfriending it up. So there must be a way to do it. It is surprisingly difficult, isn't it? I th would not have thought it would be so difficult to get a vampire boyfriend. I think, though, that that'll be enough of vampire boyfriends for right now. I think we're going to try this again next week. Well, we'll just take a week off to regroup, to think about what it is that we need to do to really bag ourselves a vampire boyfriend. And we'll come back to it at that time. Because I thought that we would probably finish this, you know, in one night. I figured that it would not be too difficult to get a vampire boyfriend. Because it never seems too difficult in any of the stories in any of the books. Obviously, in real life, it is a different story. So, we'll be right back. And when we come back, it's time to hopefully finish Planet Stronghold. We'll see if we're able to do it tonight. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> 